In the year 1009, a legendary Viking known as Torfinn the Valiant embarked on a daring expedition with three mighty ships filled with livestock and a crew of 160 brave men and women. One account even claimed the number of settlers to be 250. At the outset, harmony was forged between the intrepid Norsemen and the indigenous people of the land. They engaged in a trade, swapping furs and gray squirrel skins for vibrant red cloth, which the natives donned as striking headdresses. Yet, as with many tales of adventure, tranquility would soon be challenged by unforeseen strife between the two groups. One account speaks of a rampaging bull from the Vikings' ranks, terrorizing the natives, who reacted by fleeing to their boats and returning later with a fierce host of warriors. Alternatively, the Vikings unknowingly offering milk to the Native Americans, unaware of their lactose intolerance. This innocent gesture was misconstrued as an act of malevolence, sparking a fiery clash of cultures. The Skraelings, as the Vikings called the natives, suddenly attacked the Viking camp after what had happened a few days earlier. They had a pole that produced sound when waved in the air and Torfinn's men got scared. They fled while feeling surrounded by the natives on all sides. In the midst of this turmoil, a pregnant and courageous woman named Freydis Eriks Dottir emerged as a beacon of valor. When Freydis saw the men running, she watched them in disbelief as they were running away without a fight. Heavily pregnant, Freydis was unable to follow the men and shouted to them, Why are you running away from these pitiful wretches? Given what fine fellows you are, I would have thought you could knock them down like cattle. And if only I had weapons, I believe I could fight better than any of you. When faced with the impending danger closing in on her, Freydis exhibited a daring act of defiance. Snatching a sword from a fallen Viking, she stood boldly before the oncoming natives, burying her breasts and striking her chest with the flat of the blade, emitting a fierce cry that pierced the air. This act of defiance mirrored an ancient ritual seen in the tribes described by the Roman writer Tacitus in Germania. The women, in a display of courage and power, would bear their breasts and wave them, suggesting that the men who faltered were no more than infants in need of his mother's boobs. In the face of Freydis' undaunted display, the natives were taken aback, possibly fearful, shocked, or maybe even impressed. Whatever the case, they retreated, giving way to a stunning triumph for the bold and fearless Freydis. When the natives had fled and the danger had passed, Thorfinn the Valiant, this might be an ironic nickname given to him later, came over to Freydis and praised her courage. You know, just like the brave man he just had showed he was himself. However, in a different version from the sagas, Freydis is manipulative and backstabbing towards her fellow Vikings, putting her in a completely different light than in the brave shield maiden version we just heard about. <laughs> But before we begin, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot and blah, 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 blah. Let's get to it. According to the Icelandic sagas, the Norse started to explore lands to the west of Greenland only a few years after their Greenland settlements were established. In 985, the merchant Bjarni Herjolfsson was blown off course while sailing from Iceland to Greenland with a migration fleet consisting of 700 settlers and 25 other ships. However, only 14 ships survived the journey, and after three days of sailing, they sighted land west of the fleet. They didn't go ashore and sailed back to Greenland. Bjarni described his findings to Leif Erikson, and using the routes, landmarks, currents, and winds that Bjarni had described to him, Leif sailed from Greenland westward across the Labrador Sea, with a crew of 35 sailing the same ship Jarney had used to make the voyage. Leif and others had wanted his father, Eric the Red, to lead this expedition. However, as Eric attempted to join his son Leif on the voyage towards these new lands, he fell off his horse as it slipped on the wet rocks near the shore. And as the Vikings were very superstitious, Eric took this as a bad omen and stayed home. When Leif Erikson glimpsed his first sight of America... He described Helland as level and wooded, with broad white beaches wherever they went, and a gently sloping shoreline. They soon went ashore to explore Newfoundland. 
it didn't take long before they met the Native Americans. The first meeting with the Native Americans must have been a cultural shock. The natives were friendly, even though they had very different cultures and were technologically different. The Native Americans had never seen people with beards before, since they themselves could not grow one. Their clothes were also different, as the Vikings' clothes were made of wool, and the Native Americans had clothes made of animal skin. Their hair and eyes also had different colors. The Native Americans were also very curious about the iron the Vikings had, but the Vikings didn't share with them the technology on how to make iron, or jern, in Old Norse. However, it seems that there was cultural exchange between the two people in different ways. Leif Erikson wintered in America in 1001, probably near Cape Bald on the northern tip of Newfoundland. One day, his foster father Tyrk was found drunk on what the saga describes as wineberries, which grew wild in the area. There are varying explanations for Leif apparently describing fermented berries as wine, making some historians believe that this was what named the Land Vinland. However, the view most historians have now is that it comes from the Norse Vin, which means something like grassland. Leif spent another winter there without conflict and sailed back to Greenland, concluding that the land didn't have what he wanted. But in 1004, Leif's brother, Thorvald Eriksson, sailed with a crew of 30 men to Vinland and spent the following winter at Leif's camp in Leifsbuin. The sagas have some different details about the events that followed. In Eric, the Red Saga, Thorvald was killed by one of the natives when he was hit by an arrow, and he died from this wound shortly afterwards. In the Gronlendinga saga, they winter in Leifsbuen in Vinland without meeting any natives. When spring comes, they find three leather canoes with three native men in each. According to the saga, they kill them all without the saga explaining why. All but one is killed, and he manages to escape. A while later, the natives return with a larger number and shoot arrows, whereupon the Vikings flee. Later, when in safety, Thorvald asked his men if anyone was wounded. They said they had not received any wounds. Thorvald then says, I've got a wound under my arm, and this will probably lead to death for me. Something it soon did. Thorvald was buried sometime around 1006. He's the first European to be killed by Native Americans and buried in America. 1009, Frades, Eric's daughter, the other story. In the other saga about Frades, she's portrayed very differently than as the sword-wielding shield maiden she was in the first. In this story, she is manipulative, ruthless, and brutal. Here, Frades, Eric's daughter, visits Helgi and Finbog and proposes a journey to Vinland, saying, for it is an expedition that will prove to be easy to gain wealth and honor from. They make an agreement to split the profits equally and bring an equal number of men with them. The saga narrates that even at this point, Freyda's treachery is evident as she takes more men with her than agreed upon. They set sail together, but the brothers' ship arrive first. When Freyda's arrives, the others are already unloading their cargo in Leif's booths in Vinland, which angers Freyda's. A dispute develops, which ends with the others, then carry out their possessions and build a separate shelter. Later, more conflict arises between the two groups, and in the middle of winter, Freydis approaches Finbog with a peace offering, which he accepts. However, when she returns to her husband, Torvald, she has a completely different story to tell and says to him, They struck me and treated me badly. But you wretch, I assume you won't avenge my shame or your own. I will leave you if you don't take revenge for this. Infuriated, Torvard takes up his weapons, and they kill all the men in the other group, but spares the five women whom he could not kill. Unimpressed, Freydis demands, Give me an axe. She then proceeds to hack to death all the five women who were there, leaving them massacred before she walked away. This is the last mention in the sagas of the Vikings in America. However, clues to a continuation of the tours include the main penny, a Norwegian coin from Olaf Kira's reign from 1067 to 1093, which was found in a Native American archaeological site in the United States. This indicates an exchange between the Norse and American indigenous peoples in the late or after the 1000s. In 1121, Icelandic bishop Eric Knupsen 
who had been based on Greenland since 1112, went to seek Vinland. Nothing more is reported of him, but three years later, another bishop, Arnold, was sent to Greenland to replace him. In 1347, a ship is reported to have arrived in Iceland, after being blown off course on its way home from Markland to Greenland with a load of timber. The implication is that the Greenlanders had continued to use Markland as a source of timber over several centuries. When the Viking Greenland settlement was abandoned in the 15th century due to climate change, the Viking trips to America also ended. In 2010, it was proven that in Iceland, there are people with DNA from indigenous peoples in Canada or Siberia. The genetic traces of today's Icelandic population indicate that at least one or more women of Native American or Asian descent had daughters in Iceland. The DNA has been in Iceland for at least 300 years and most likely several hundred years more back in time. The Vikings discovered America by accident and later tried to settle the New World, but frequent hostilities between the Vikings and the Native American groups deterred or prevented the Vikings from settling permanently. As history has taught us, when two civilizations meet for the first time, the technologically lesser advanced civilization always seemed to lose out one way or the other. However, here we see a reversal of this as the Stone Age people. The Skraelings fought off the Iron Age Vikings, denying them the opportunity to settle. If so, the decision seems to have been a good idea when we know what happened to the Native Americans. When Columbus and the other Europeans arrived about 500 years later, changing the continent forever. Thank you for hanging on all the way to the end. Please like and subscribe to keep discovering history's hidden gems. And until we meet again, may your path be adorned with the spirit of the Vikings. Skauf.